Let me paint the picture for you. The seven months have passed since you purchased those concert tickets. You've listened to all their music. You've memorized all their lyrics. And you've studied every single detail of every band member. The day has finally come. You and your best friends are heading to the show that you've been waiting for for months. And you just cannot contain your excitement. You get there, you buy your overpriced drink. $12. Best $12 ever. You get to your seats as the opening band plays and they surprise you with how good they are. Then that moment comes. The lights go down, the crowd erupts and your favorite band walks on the stage. The lights come up, the show ends, and everyone in that arena leaves feeling inspired. Everyone leaves feeling like they want to become the best version of themselves. It's the kind of feeling where it seems like you can accomplish anything you want. You can be whoever you want. There is a collective euphoric feeling that has touched every single person in that arena. What I've just described to you is what I like to call the indescribable feeling. It's the feeling you get when something magical happens. It makes your inner kid inside speak up, and you can't help but feel inspired to act in line with the person you wish to be. This feeling happens after we watch influential movies, after we attend concerts, after we attend playoff games and our team wins. It's the best feeling in the world, one that no sequence of words in the English language can truly capture the essence of. But what if I told you this feeling doesn't just need to occur after these big moments? What if I told you that this feeling can be fostered in seemingly small moments? In this video, I'm gonna tell you the story of how I decided that I wanna live a life creating these indescribable feelings in others. Like any directionless 18 year old, I did the most logical thing I could think of. I booked a one-way ticket to to Australia where I committed to work as an orchard hand for a few months to extend my visa. That's just a fancy way of saying apple picker. Wanting to tour around the Melbourne area and up the east coast, I bought the absolute sexiest car I could think of. A white 99 Toyota Corolla hatchback and his name was Bruce. Hello I'm Bruce. On one of my adventures I was setting off to Coffs Harbor to meet up with my grandparents. Shit's bussin'. Shit. <laughs> I'm not sure about you, but whenever I hear my car has mechanical problems, I just turn up the radio and then poof, all my problems go away. This was my strategy with old Brucey as I meandered through the surprisingly diverse terrain of Australia. As I was driving, my radio strategy started to prove to be ineffective. The radio started to cut out altogether. I ignored this initially, knowing me and old Brucey had places we needed to be, but eventually the problem became unignorable. My car eventually stopped altogether. Damn's car, dude. Yo, dude, turn that shit on. <laughs> Not knowing what to do, I popped open the hood of my trunk, sat on the front of my hood, and just waited for anyone. Uh, all I can do is laugh at this point, but 305, about 20 minutes ago, I was just driving and this thing just, battery just died. After it felt like an eternity, this super nice guy named Tony, can I get a ballpark beefy? He pulled over, said there might be one tow truck driver who may be able to help. Not gonna lie, it felt like the perfect plot for a Criminal Minds episode. I will find you. And I will kill you. I called the number of the tow truck driver and this guy with the thickest Aussie accent I've ever heard. Oi, slow down you dickhead. <laughs> said he'd be right over. His name was Gary, and again, the ominous music played as I hopped into this truck with blind faith. Update, uh, <laughs> we got a tow truck. And this is how most people would have reacted. Uh, 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 oh, stay alive, stay alive. Uh. But this is how I reacted. Why is good morning spelled with two words, but good night is spelled with one? So we got it up and running. Here's Gary bringing up the tow truck. Gary's been a super nice guy. Gary loaded up old Brucey into the back of his tow truck, hauled it back to the nearest town of Can River, and I figured that would be it. I'd find some overpriced motel for the night and just try to find a mechanic in the morning who would charge me through the roof for the services. But that is not what happened. And this is when the idea of being that person began to formulate in the back of my mind. Gary not only went out of his way to replace my car battery with a completely new one. He invited me over to his house for dinner with him and his wife, Shirley, which he paid for. <sighs> As we finished up eating, Gary drove me up to a motorhome, which he said was mine for the night. At this point, I was ready to give Gary and Shirley as much money as they wanted. They had earned it, and honestly, I didn't care. They made me feel so incredible, and when I asked how much it was going to be, Gary said he was going to charge me the princely sum of $100. And I asked him, I was just genuinely awestruck and curious, Gary, why are you doing all this? And he said, and these are the words that I will never forget, this quote will stick with me for my entire life. He said, if my daughter 
was in a faraway place just as you are, I would hope there'd be a Gary there to take care of her. It was those words and this interaction with Gary and Shirley that was not just the turning point of my travels, but the turning point of my life. I'm serious. It may sound cliche, but you really learn so much about yourself when you go traveling. I learned I didn't just want to be the recipient of that indescribable feeling. I wanted to become someone who created those indescribable feelings in other people. And that's what this channel is all about. It's helping you live in line with the person you wish to be. I owe so much to Gary and Shirley and I genuinely can't thank them enough. And if you ever find yourself in Can River, tell them Sammy from Canada says hello. Can River tell I'm not gonna forget that name anytime soon how you can create the indescribable feeling for others. What if you don't have Gary's mechanical abilities? Or what if you don't have the angelic voice of Chad Kroger? I like the freckles on your chest. If you are an ordinary person, like all of us, there are still countless ways you can instill this indescribable feeling in others. And the hidden benefit to performing these acts of kindness is that you feel great as well. Everybody wins. Hold the door for someone. Let someone in on the road. Don't be serious. Come on, let's go! Let's go! Send a text message to someone you haven't spoken to in a while. If we all commit to performing these small acts of kindness every day, we can positively influence so much around us. It enables us to live in line with the person we wish to be. Thank you all so much for being here, and make sure to click that subscribe button unless you want a sneaky surprise. Ah! Cheers. See you next week.